This is Ground Affected. I am your host, Brent, and welcome to squeezing your bottle of paint too hard, and now you have a blob on your wet palette. In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted Craven from C27 Miniatures and Terrains. I will leave a link for C27 in the description below. Now, of course, you're used to seeing large models on my channel, but I do sometimes dabble in a little bit of miniature painting now and then. I feel like miniature painting is one of the best ways to keep your skills highly tuned and make sure you get in good practice in between big jobs, especially when you've got nothing else to do or you're waiting for things to be printed. Sometimes I like to add just one or two miniatures onto a build plate if I have the space. I will keep these miniatures in my backlog. Essentially, it's my only pile of shame because I don't actually print anything anymore unless I'm going to paint it. I have one or two models that are left that need to be painted. The rest is just miniatures, which I keep in the backlog on purpose for times when I'm waiting between prints. I find if you work on such a small scale, it certainly helps to hone your skills when you get onto a larger model later on these things become so much easier. In order for this video to carry on, what I need you to do is make sure you go down the bottom and leave a like on the video. Consider giving me a subscriber, because if you gave me a subscriber, I will then have one more new subscriber. Of course, if you're already down there, you might as well leave some words. It doesn't matter at this point what those words say, as long as you leave some words. This is in order to help Uncle Elgi, the rhythm, know that my video is worth watching and push it out to more people to see. And of course, if I don't live up to your standard of expectations by the end of the video, it's as easy as taking all these things away and deleting your comment. And then you can follow the instructions I give you in the last few seconds of the video. Now let's stop talking and let's just get straight into painting. So for the first time in a while, I'm going to give myself a fresh wet palette. In general, I like to fill this thing up. Sometimes I will just add new paint over the top of old dry paint. That's how much I don't like changing my wet palette. My wet palette preferences aside, let's get into painting this model. I start out with a really, really bright green. This is going to be the base color. Essentially, the character that I'm painting is a jungle character. He comes from the jungle. He needs to look like he's in the jungle. So we need bright greens and we need to complement those bright greens with some super dark greens. In order to make those colors jump out from each other, I'm going to use a complementary color and that's going to be red. But I'm not going to just use red because no one wants to see a red tree. Although it might be kind of cool, it's not the kind of thing we're going for in this piece. So I'm going to use a reddish brown. This is going to complement the green and make it look even brighter and bolder. This is something that is probably important but not too important. Just know that I chose the brown based on its reddish tone and this is to complement the green. I'm going to use a wash, a darkish brown wash and I'm going to go into all the little knots and holes and nooks and crannies on this branch. This is just to create a little bit of depth in those pieces. I then take a mixture of yellow into the original green that I used and I'm going to use that to brighten some highlights on the moss and on the leaves. Also I needed to add a little bit of detail to the leaves and to create a bit of depth I'm going to use green wash and I'm going to add this around the edges and especially on the insides of the leaves where the little veins are. I then dry brushed a little bit of a lighter orangish brown over the top of the brown that I had placed down. This is going to catch all the raised edges and create a little bit of texture on this piece. I then came in with a brush and I used a very fine brush to go over some of the edges and specifically push the highlights in certain areas. I felt like I needed a little bit more depth in it, so I went back in with the green wash again and I just caught all the edges of the moss. Now to add a bit of texture to the base, I'm going to add a little bit of this pigment powder just around the base around the stump itself. Not too much because I don't want to overdo this part. And then to finish off the base, I gave it a nice black rim because you should always put a black rim around your base. To be fair, it doesn't always have to be black, but just make sure you paint your brim of your base, please. In order to dry this a little bit quicker, I used my airbrush with no paint in it. I then checked that everything still fits, even though I'm not sure why I checked it, because everything should still fit, nothing has changed since I last painted it. To paint his pants, I'm going to paint it with this desert yellow. It's pretty much a sandy kind of color but I don't want to go stark yellow because it would be way too bright and eventually I need this to look like some kind of 
animal print at the end so it definitely wouldn't be a bright yellow but I need it to be yellowish. I had to do a couple of coats of this paint because this specific color doesn't cover very well. In order to give a bit of shadows to this I used Reichland Flesh Shade and I shaded it from the bottom with my airbrush. I then went back into it again and I started to brighten up some of the areas across his thighs and specifically where the light would hit the model just to create a little bit more depth. For his skin tones I painted reddish flesh as the base tone and basically I just did a flat coat of everything making sure that all the skin pieces that are sticking out of the model had a good solid base coat of this color. This is one of the great things about painting a miniature because you're working in a very very small space this is going to force you to use your brush in ways you probably haven't used it before especially if you have a lot of space to paint now you're having to fit your brush into an area that's a little bit more difficult before and when you do get back onto the big models it won't be as difficult as it was originally because now you've learned a new trick on a smaller model thus making it so much easier when you get into the larger model again for this little main thing around his neck i painted it with the red leather and then i used Reichen flesh shade from the bottom again as a shadow just to create a bit more depth in it I painted his stick pretty much stick color and then I used one of my favorite metallic paint brands Pro Acryl and I painted the silver on the end of his spear. For his hair I just used black from Vallejo. This is quite a dark black. It's really good for if you want to do any kind of dark black areas which is pretty great in this situation because his hair needed to be dark black. Very carefully, I made sure to paint in his moustache and his beard as well. Luckily for me, C27 had sculpted his eyebrows, so this made it easy to turn the brush on its side and just catch them very carefully with the edge of the brush to create some lovely fluffy caterpillars across his forehead. I then started to lighten up the skin tones and I worked my way up with consecutive lightness of colors. Basically, I thin this down quite a lot so that it doesn't cover very well, but it does start to blend in from the layer underneath it. While that skin was drying, I dry brushed the mane around the back of his neck. It's part of his coat. I'm just going to call it a mane because essentially it's supposed to be a line. I then used the same color from his pants to give it a highlight. And this is not going to be the final highlight. I'll probably come back to this later. I then went back to the skin tones again and added another layer of highlights, this time going even brighter and making sure that the paint is super thin but also making sure to only hit the model with the brush from the top angles. Essentially the light is coming from above him, he's in a jungle, the sun is above, it's the way it is. Now in order to paint some of the other details on him before I could stick him to the base, I needed to make sure that his boots and some of the detailing on his pants was done before I stuck him down just to make it easier to reach them and I was not going to have a problem getting my brush in between his legs and that stump that he will be standing on. So I used Saigo Brown and I painted all the stuff around his belt and then I used that same color to paint his awesome tennis bracelets. Once I had painted his tennis bracelets, making sure that I kept the paint nice and neat and tidy, I then used that same paint to paint his boots. I painted all of his boots all the way past where the teeth are that are hanging on them because I'm going to come back later and I'm going to need to add that color over the top and I need it to look like the boot is underneath those teeth. I then base coated this wrap around his spear and I started to work on his pants. There is like essentially a cheetah or a leopard print i'm pretty sure it's probably a cheetah print that's on his pants and for this i just used a permanent marker with a very fine tip and i basically just drew as randomly as possible since i'm a human and random is just not possible i tried not to make any patterns making sure that each spot was not the same but kind of looked like they came from the same family all i did was make sure there was three spots in a grouping one large one medium and one small and to randomize it i did two instead of three and this is the end result of that i then painted the teeth around his boots because again i want to make sure that these details are done long before i stick him on the base and this was going to be a lot more difficult to do at that point while I was there with teeth colored paint, I might as well just paint the teeth around his waist as well, and I did that. 
I then scraped off some of the paint on his feet in order to get a good bond when sticking him down. However, I wasn't clever enough to scrape the paint on the tree, so it's not a very good bond. However, it is going to be strong enough for sticking it on my shelf. I then had to hold it together forever. One eternity later. Once it had dried and it was stuck together and not falling apart, this was fantastic. It was time for me to get back into the last bits of details on the model. I then used a lighter bone color or essentially closer to white just to highlight the edges of the base tone that I put down on the teeth. To do the teeth on his chest, I painted the string that holds them down and then I painted the teeth with a slightly darker bone color and put the same white highlight on top. I used my airbrush with no paint in it to dry in between steps just to hurry this up a little bit. And that's pretty much where I called it done. Hopefully you managed to pick up some tips in this video that will help you when you paint something miniature or if you're painting even larger models in the future. If you are struggling with miniature painting or even just large model painting or any painting or 3D printing, then you may want to consider joining the Patreon where you will get access to our private Discord where nobody will treat you like a complete idiot just like certain other social media groups when you go in there and try to ask questions, you get treated like a complete schmuck. In our group, you never will get treated like that. There will definitely be jokes, but you will have your questions answered to the best of whoever's knowledge is able and available to answer at the time. We are all a good group of people and we try to make sure that we further each other and learn from each other in a super strong community. And if you want to be part of that community, make sure to look in the description for the link to the Patreon and help support the channel. Of course, there are other ways you can support the channel just by liking the video, leaving some words in this model box that YouTube allows you to leave some words in. That is all going to help the video to get seen by more people. And if you have not, you might want to click the subscribe button because we all know this. I need one more subscriber and you are the one who can give me one more subscriber. Also, speaking of Patreon, I'd like to thank the two new patrons we got this week. Ralph Hanwalter and Javier Luna. Thank you, my dude, so much for keeping these lights blinding my eyeballs. Also, your support means a lot to the channel. It's because of people like you that we're able to keep the lights on and make sure that things keep going. And we're now at the part of the video where I get to tell you what you need to do if you didn't like anything you saw in this video. The best thing that you can do for yourself is to take your thumb, stick it on the dislike button, and then kindly f*** off. Just like that guy on TikTok who says I cannot use a specific song for a specific thing because it ruins it for him. Well. You just need to follow my advice. If you don't like it, 